Okay, so now we're going to take a look at um, hepatic abscesses. Now, with hepatic abscesses, we pretty much have three types. Uh, one is a bacterial one, also called pyogenic. Um, then there is a specific amoeba, uh, which will cause the amoebic um, abscess. Uh, and, and this is going to be the um, entamoeba histolytica. And then you have the hyodotid um, uh, abscess. And I, I think I'm just going to take them one at a time. So this is going to be primarily bacterial. Um, which bacteria? This can be uh, the, the most common one is uh, E. coli. Uh, but you can also get uh, Klebsiella. Uh, you can get strep pneumonia. And then some of the um, anaerobics, such as uh, Bacteroides. And with, uh, entamoeba, uh, with amoebic abscess, there's only one. It's only Entamoeba histolytica. And with uh, Hydatid, uh, we're only going to be looking at the Econococcus, which is a tapeworm. Okay, so let's, go, let's start with the pyogenic first. So pyogenic is uh, pretty much, in a nutshell, when you get a bacterial abscess formed in the uh, liver. So um, what are the different, how, I mean, how do you get a bacteria? Wow. Well, okay. There you go. Um, how do you get a bacteria to get into the liver? Well, there's uh, three primary routes. Uh, one is going to be from the portal vein. So uh, the first way is from the portal vein. So this is basically uh, going to be anything from your GIT tract. So, um, you know, the portal vein is going to go into, uh, you know, different parts of your liver through that uh, area. Now, what kind of infection would you have? This is going to be, uh, you know, some type of appendicitis, uh, and the infection, you know, jumps into the veins, uh, and it can even be diverticulitis. And these are the two uh, common ones, but there's obviously going to be much, much more. Uh, then the other one is going to be via the um, biliary tract. So this is most commonly due to cholangitis. Uh, so, you know, you have a biliary tract, you get a cholangitis here, and then, you know, you have your uh, gallbladder, and it can, and that can also cause it to go up that way. And finally, um, you can have it through uh, hematogenous sp uh, spread. Uh, and this is going to be anytime there's bacteremia or anything uh, along those lines. Uh, and that's going to be through the, um, you know, that's going to come from, I'll use a different color, uh, that's going to come from the uh, uh, celiac uh, trunk and it's going to go up into the liver. Now, uh, of course, you have uh, two other ways. One is going to be to trauma. And the other one, you know, is going to be pretty much unknown. They call it cryptic. And actually, 50% uh, of the times, it's going to be cryptic. So this is the general etiology. Um, now, what do you see when, when you know, a patient has um, hepatic abscess? Uh, well, I kind of p uh, break it down into a few ways. First, I, I kind of look at it as of the infectious, the, you know, the symptoms of infection. So they're going to have all the symptoms of infection. And what is that? Uh, that's going to be your fever, uh, your constant, and you know, every time you have fever, you're going to have your constitutional symptoms, weakness, you know, weight loss, anorexia, all that, and um, nausea, vomiting. And of course, you're also going to get leukocytosis. And so these are the signs related to the fact that you have an infection. Then the other uh, symptoms are going to be related to the liver and bile. So whenever you have problems with liver and bile, you're always going to get a certain uh, types of uh, symptoms. And this is primarily your right upper quadrant pain, which it radiates, right? Radiates to the uh, intrascapular or the, uh, you know, just to the back area to the, or to the left shoulder in the back. Um, you get some jaundice. Obviously, this is going to be, uh, you know, the, and, then all, uh, and um, you're going to get tender hepatomegaly. 
And these are going to be symptoms that we're going to find in all of them. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, pyogenic, amoebic, or hydatid. And then we'll focus on um, other, you know, different symptoms and in, in investigations, how you can differentiate them. Um, now, in, in this, and uh, if you also notice, you know, right upper quadrant pain that radiates in jaundice, that could also be cholecystitis as well. Um, however, just one thing to point out is in this situation, it's more severe. And actually the, uh, actually not necessarily more severe, I'll, I'll take that away, but they just, it's just the patient looks toxic. You know, the patient looks really, really ill, really sick. Uh, now, what kind of investigations? What kind of investigations would we do? Uh, the investigation that you'd want to do, uh, okay, first, of course, you got, uh, this is a problem with the liver. So you're going to do your liver function tests. And they're all going to be elevated. You're going to have uh, elevated AST, uh, ALT, you're going to have elevated ALP. Um, you know, uh, you, you, bilirubin will also be elevated. Um, you know, your, your uh, uh, albumin level will be low. I mean, you have a huge infection. Obviously, you're going to have all these symptoms. Uh, but w the, the nice, the, the uh, investigation that will really show you what you have is going to be the ultrasound. And you, what you'll see in the ultrasound is a hypoechoic mass. And uh, what's even you know better, uh, what's actually the uh, investigation of choice is the CT scan. And uh, let me see the CT scan. We go here. Okay. So here you can see the CT scan. Uh, and you see how evident it is right here? Huge um, abscess sitting right there. And so that's how you can uh, see that. And then the, the other thing that we do want to do as well is we want to do a chest x-ray. Uh, and this actually goes for all the abscesses. Uh, they all can uh, cause pulmonary symptoms. So we do, do need to see a chest x-ray. And what you might find is you might find signs of pneumonia. Uh, and you might find, you know, uh, maybe air under the diaphragm. Now, how would you treat this? Uh, the treatment is a bacterial infection. So, um, obviously the first thing we'd want to do is we'd want to just automatically give uh, some course of antibiotics. Uh, you'd also want to do, um, you can attempt a percutaneous aspiration, and then this can, you know, you can take this culture and then, you know, do sensitivity on it. Uh, and this should be um, ultrasound or CT guided. And finally, um, if, you know, all those fails, or if it's really big, uh, you can do surgery to remove the. Uh, or to drain the abscess. Okay, so that's going to be uh, with the pyogenic. So the next one we're going to go to is the amoebic. So in the amoebic, uh, like we discussed before, this is called by intermeba histolytica. Uh, how do you get it? It's due to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, food that's contaminated with feces of the cyst and um, you know the cyst will go into the uh, cecum. I actually have a d decent diagram here. So what happens is um, with entamoeba histolytica uh, you, you have the um, you have the cyst will go down into the intestines and then get absorbed and at the cecum it'll start uh, growing and then from the cecum it goes into the mesenteric vein goes into the portal vein and then it goes into the liver and from the liver it can shoot into the lungs uh, it can go into the peritoneal area it can even go up to the brain heart uh, it, it can go into many different uh, areas after that uh, now when we're looking at the um, So we can just delete that. 
Uh, when we're looking at the clinical symptoms, um, what you'll find is it's going to be the same thing as uh, with regards to you have signs of infection, which is going to be your fever, um, constitutional symptoms, and uh, leukocytosis. You're also going to have your symptoms of related to the liver and bile. So that's going to be your right upper quadrant pain that radiates jaundice, tender hepatomegaly. But there's, there's a few extra symptoms that um, you don't see. So these you're going to get in both uh, amoebic, hydatid, and uh, pyogenic bacteria. But here are three symptoms that you might not see in other ones. First of all is diarrhea. And again, if you recall, it goes first into the cecum, and so then the patient might have some symptoms of diarrhea. The other one is cough. Now, all of them can have cough and pulmonary symptoms, but this will have um, an anchovy, this can possibly have an anchovy paste uh, phlegm, I guess you can say, uh, coming out of it. And that suggests, if you do see that, uh, that suggests a uh, bronchopleural fistula has developed. And so obviously this is a more serious sign. And finally, the, the uh, intamoeba histolytica, 95% of the time, there is some history of travel within five months to an endemic area such as South, uh, South America and India and some of the other Asian countries. Now, let's now take a look at your investigations. Again, it's, an, it's a problem with the liver, so of course, your liver function test, everything would be up. The same as um, uh, in pyogenic. Um, now, uh, ultrasound, you're also going to see, you know, some type of abscess here and even CT scan, uh, but those aren't enough to clear differentiate. Do we have, uh, let me just write chest x-ray as well. Uh, you know, it's not, not enough to clearly differentiate whether you have pyogenic. So what you could do, since it's found in the cecum, it's not, this is not always the case, but um, sometimes when you do a stool, uh, you, you get the stool, uh, you could do microscopy. Now, um, microscopy is, well, first let's talk about stool. The problem with stool is it doesn't necessarily mean that they have amoebic colitis. They can have, uh, you know, so, uh, some problem with the liver and the, you know, the one the colon has cleared up or it's no longer there. So you might not even find anything. And if you do, if you look under microscopy, there's so many other organisms that are similar or, you know, uh, they're not going to cause any disease. And so you can't really differentiate the two. Um, so what you can, what you could do is you could, you could try looking for the stool antigen. Uh, the only issue with this one is you need a fresh sample, so that kind of uh, holds you back. Um, then the other one is you can culture it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, this is a good idea, but this is limited. Um, you're oftentimes limited in uh, availability and what way you can do it. And finally, you can do uh, serology testing uh, for this uh, as well. Now, with, with as far as treatment, the treatment is a little bit more straightforward it's um it is a protozoa so it's uh still going to um respond to uh sorry not metronidazole it's gonna it's gonna respond to metronidazole um this is uh this is effective in 90 percent of the time uh, however for that 10 percent you would need to go to uh, surgery uh, for aspiration Now, for the final one, so we ha we've done the um, pyogenic, we've done the amoebic. Now let's go to the final uh, uh, d disease that causes abscess, hydatid. So hydatid is uh, caused by the uh, Econococcus granulosa, like we discussed before. How do you get it? Um, it's basically you drink food or water uh, that's been contaminated with dog feces. And um, clinically, uh, what do we get? Now, these can come in all different shapes and sizes. So, if it's, uh, and if, first of all, if it's really small, 
uh, it's usually asymptomatic, uh, but usually once it gets to five centimeters, uh, you will start to see uh, symptoms. Um, now, kind of going back to the other theme of the, the symptoms, the symptoms are going to depend on where it is, the location, uh, how big it is, and what it's, you know, and, and basically it's the mass effect. Uh, it's just taking up space and that's where you're causing uh, damage. Uh, so, for example, if you have, if it's found in the liver, well, what are your symptoms going to be? But well, we already kind of went over that. Right upper quadrant pain, uh, jaundice, uh, and obviously you can expect to see, you know, your, your liver function test and everything higher. Uh, what if it's found in the lungs? Well, of course, the patient is going to present with uh, s some type of cough, uh, you know, maybe even hemoptysis. Uh, and other symptoms, you know, if if it, if it gets pleural effusions, uh, symptoms related to that. Um, how about if it's found in the heart? If it makes its way to the heart, then what you, what should you be? What can you expect? You know, probably a pericardial inf uh, pericardial effusion. And again, other symptoms related to the heart, depending on where it is. And finally, you know, probably one of the most serious ones, if it's found in the brain or spine then depending on where it is, what level it's on, you're going to get uh, neurological deficits. Um, what would be the investigation that you would do? Uh, when it comes to labs, they're not so specific. You could do serology uh, for it if you're really looking for it. Uh, but um, the method of choice here is going to be the ultrasound. And this is because you can see many, and also, uh, you know, CT scan and MRI do help. They have certain advantages for seeing certain things. And um, I do have a, I believe this is a CT scan. It's not working. Okay. Okay, it's not moving over here. But, uh, you know, there's a CT scan. What you, what you tend to see, I can just draw it out. Uh, you know, you you have this here, and you have multiple uh, cysts sometimes, and within the cysts you have the trophozoites of the um, uh, sorry, the conococcus granulosus. So now, finally, uh, what is your treatment? Uh, you're going to use an anti um the uh, uh, albendazoles. Albendazole and Nibendazole. They tend to work pretty well. Um, if not, you would, uh, so that's your first treatment. Second would be, um, you can do something called PAIR. P-A-I-R, and this is, this stands for puncture, aspirate, uh, inject and re-aspirate. Um, this is a little bit risky because when you puncture and if, if the uh, cysts get out and it ruptures and that can cause anaphylaxis. So the big worry here is anaphylaxis. You don't you, you don't want to uh, you want to be very careful if you you know when you work percutaneously so or when you do surgery. And of course if all that doesn't work or there's too many cysts or it's too big then you're going to just have to do uh, surgical resection and again any type of uh, surgery that you do you want to be careful rupturing because that can lead to anaphylaxis